Hi, I'm Roman the Keller Golfer and this is how I play the course. Good morning and welcome to Real Soto Grande. This is the older course of the two famous ones, besides Real Valderrama of course, which are built down here in the south of Spain near the village of Soto Grande. Real Soto Grande was actually the first course on European soil built by Robert Grant Jones in 1964, including the first course ever in Europe with an automatic irrigation system and, maybe most important, the first course which used Bermuda grass, which is not very common down here. So my first tip of the day is actually go hit some putts because the Bermuda grass pre feels pretty much different than all the band grass which you find around here and also in Valderrama. Well this course is very famous for a lot of tournaments like the Open de España and numerous European tour events, um, especially the qualifying school for many many years. Also it is very well known for the amateurs. I think there's still the amateur trophy today, it's called the Soto Grande Cup, it used to be called the Sherry Cup um, and this is considered one of the top five tournaments uh, for the European amateurs. You'll find a lot of interesting names on the boards of winning that uh, Soto Grande uh, Cup, including Sasha Garcia, Patrick Harrington, Rory McIlroy and some others. As you probably see on the first tee behind me already, the fairways are wide and that keeps on going throughout pretty much the whole course. So it's not a narrow course, it's actually a wide course, but it's long and the greens are huge. So let's see how many we hit <laughs> and I hope you enjoy the round with me. Off we go, first tee shot straight on. So the second one is a par 5, turns to the left at the end, first shot is somewhere to the right. So uh, although a pretty average tee shot left the shoulder of the bunker, the hole is pretty long, I get 250 meters left uh, to that elevated green. So in this case just a layer, but uh, I could use everything I want. So I'm walking towards my third shot on the second hole. One thing I need to explain about uh, typical Robert Trent Jones. The greens are actually huge and they have been restored to the original size by old plans in the 2016 big renovation. And the typical things is they are elevated, they are high, so better make your yardage right and see how to get it close to the flag. So the third hole is, seems to be quite easy, but it's a sharp duck leg to the left and today into the wind. I probably need a driver, but we'll leave it short before the bunkers. Do not be left. So a lovely t-shirt in front of the bunker. Um, so all you need is probably not more than a 220 t-shot, that's perfectly fine. Um, I got 90 to the front of the green, but it's pretty elevated. So I would say it's at least 5 meters plus or about a club today, a bit into the wind. So I keep it left of the flag because leaving, missing the green to the right is probably not a good option. Nice!
So here we have a long, really long and I think quite difficult par 3. A place 200 meters from where we are right now. But as you can probably see, even here, wind is uh, coming from the right. So it's Levante today, for those who have seen the other video. <laughs> it's coming from the sea and we are very close to the sea. Not too bad. Not bad. So you have actually two strategic options. As you see on the left side on the on the picture, you could either hit the straight drive down but over the hill and then it rolls down and then you have a pretty much uphill uh, uh, shot into the green. I uh, personally even if it's into the wind, I will leave it short. I had a three wood, so something like about 200 to 10 meters at the max. So this one turned out nicely. You see, if you go further than this slope, you go down to the valley. It's okay from down there, but you don't see anything. So nothing too special here. I think uh, the par 5 goes a little bit left to right at the end, so you can hit a long tee shot if you want and can. <laughs> I go straight for that little tree in the background because I will not reach it in two anyway. So the seventh is one of the signature holes of the course, um, at least the homepage says so. I, I probably agree, it's a lovely hole. It's downhill green is somewhere to the left, but there's a pond in front of the green. And that makes the hole a bit trickier because you don't want to be left and everything slopes right to left. So the, so, so the way I try to play it is uh, something like a three wood um, towards that bunker. And I would have, then I, then I would have, or might have, a good angle into the grave, hopefully. So, nice, or not so nice, uh, because this t-shirt was definitely too short. Um, I'll show you a better angle if we hit a longer t-shirt more to the right. Um, you see that I still have the trees in play, and there's water front right. You might see the bunkers there, and right of that is bunker. So I can try to draw it around into the wind, to the green. <laughs> this is what I will do, uh, but that's not really safe play. So, yeah, stay right, folks. Oh, you do have a shot. Wow. So 
Seven's hole, it's a rather long, well, mid distance uh, par three. It's 165 to the front of the green today. We have backwind, it's 170 to the pin. Let's see what we can do. The ninth hole, the white marker is up here, although it's the yellow uh, ye yellow boxes. Uh, but the white one, they put the white ones today back to the blacks, which is 50 meters further back. And I don't want to play that. It's difficult enough from here. not a good one so this one was far left and far left green bunker um, why did I hit it that way you do not want to attack the flag because everything right bounces way to the right into the halfway house more or less uh, in the back that's also not a good idea so I wanted to stay left unfortunately it didn't work now well, let's have another bunker shot So right side, right half of fairway, but keep left, stay left of the bunkers. So I probably hit to the tree in the background. So once again, an elevated green with some frightening bunkers in front. The green is in the far back on the right side. It's a power five, but for those who are really brave and carry it past that first hump and it rolls down a little bit, you may attack the green with the second. Usually I can't, I mean it's 537 meters. So I go for a straight tee shot, should be fine. So from here it's 260 to the green, certainly not something for me. Um, so I go with a layup shot about 160, 170, just straight on. I hit it towards those palm trees in the back. Oh, safe side of life. So lovely layup as a second as promised. And uh, yeah, still it's over water, over the bunker. Behind is not that much room, nevertheless. A hundred meter shot, 110 yards. Wind is a little bit from the right helping, so Standard trot, but still needs to be done.
very beautiful hole, I think. Nevertheless, a very tricky one. It's 180, slightly elevated. So you can't let it run to the green, it doesn't work. So a funny story in between about those palm trees. Um, you have noticed we've left uh, the upper parts of that course where there were a lot of cork trees, as you probably know from Valderrama. But down here, there are a lot of palm trees. And by that you can actually see that an Englishman has built something here. In this case, it was Joseph McNicking who found it, so the ground and everything like that. Because for the English, sorry guys, palms belong to the sun. Um, palms are actually not uh, natural in south of Spain, so every palm in here has been imported from Morocco or similar, but uh, for a proper holiday location, palm trees are necessary. So 14th tee shot, I hope you can see that this lake is everywhere and you have different options. You can go <laughs> straight on, uh, but then it's a 200 plus carry uh, into the wind today. Certainly not possible. You can go rather left and towards the bunker. Um, I think that's my preferred line. And let's see if I can make it. It's a par five, the second, the second and third are uphill. So this hole really has everything and it's certainly not an easy one. See, I was lucky with my t-shirt, faded a little bit, and then up here. <coughs> so my second one's supposed to be further to the right, nevertheless, it's okay down here, but it's very uphill. Third shot, it's 102 to green, but I play it as 125. So lovely par 4, just 407 meters. <laughs> nice t-shirt, nevertheless almost 190 meters to the pin, so I need a little wood. So no worries if you hit your second one left. Plenty of room to the left. Final stretch, this is 17. It looks like an island green, it almost is one. Uh, although I personally think the water is not that much in play because everywhere you have the bunkers too. Nevertheless, it's very intimidating. You have no idea where the wind is coming from because it's very, very open. Uh, it plays today 157 meters. I think we have a little breeze into us because you, in the very background is the sea. And as I've told you before, it's Levante, so the wind is coming from the sea. Um, yeah, let's see how we do. Middle of the green should be good.
So last hole of the day, it's wide open, but don't be fooled, you should hit the fairway because the green is again elevated, lots of bunkers around and quite difficult to hit actually. But um, the difficulty here, in my opinion, is that you have to find yourself a clear aim. Um, it could, could be either the flag or one of the palm trees. So although that was a nice t-shirt, I still got 200 to the green. Yeah, it's a 400 meter hole into the wind. I told you it's not an easy finish. <laughs> Cut. So that was it with me, the Keller Golfer, and how I play the course in Real Soto Grande. So I hope you enjoyed the round as much as I did. If you haven't done so, please subscribe, leave, leave me a like and a message, of course. And I hope to see you soon here at the Keller Golfers. Adios and bye bye.